This message today is titled, St. Teresa of Avila. Pearl of Wisdom given to Elizabeth Clare Prophet, Volume 35, Number 61. Now it was given from a series, Voyages of Soul Discovery, and this was in, at, delivered in Atlanta, Georgia. So I thought it was interesting how it was a, a, a 4th of July, and it was, it was quite a spectacular moment, I believe, from the people that were here. So we'd like to in, give a little bit of a historical background of St. Teresa. St. Teresa was born in Spain, 1515. As a young woman, she entered the Carmelite convent, situated outside a very old medieval walled city. And after more than 20 years in the convent, she began to have deep experiences of God's presence in prayer. Now, before that, and as we view the work of St. Teresa of Avila, we see displayed much courage in her spiritual endeavors. Now, this was the 16th century, and it was the beginning of, in Spanish, in Spain, the Spanish Inquisition. So it was a serious time during the 16th century. And at the time, St. Teresa fell with, and she experienced in her 20s, she was plagued with an illness no doctor could properly diagnose or cure. And Teresa was thought to be on death's door, so to speak. It was very fatal. And as she was about to be given last rites, after some time, miraculously, she regained consciousness. And after the time, Teresa remained paralyzed at, afterward for quite some time and eventually recover, recovered slowly and painfully. Now, as a devout nun for many years and returning to her convent, Teresa began to experience visions and raptures in her 40s. And these intensified quickly and dramatically. And she became un, came under the suspicion of either being influenced by demonic entities or being that of a fraud. And at the same time, however, many around her were convinced that her experiences were genuinely divine in order. Now, as a result, her superiors ordered her to write of her ecstasies, of her encounters, under the watchful eye of the papal um, powers that be. And this was, again, during the beginning of the Spanish Inquisition, and this was judicial institution, in, which resulted in consolidating the monarchy power in Spain. And it lasted for quite some time until the 1836, when it ended. So it did go on for a bit of a time. And you can study that. Um, it's in historical accounts. So St. Teresa wrote in her autobiography called La Vida, and that's Spanish for autobiography, in an attempt to convey that her remarkable experiences were very, very, very truly supernatural. One very important part of this narrative, though, is that Teresa kept always constant emphasis on her own humility, which, of course, became widespread public knowledge in which people didn't have newspapers that much back then. And um, so a lot of um, hoopla went around um, and uh, public knowledge that in which she levitated. Now, this was a hard pill for the strict officious to accept. The Ecumenical Council in Italy and Spain are all and all throughout Europe. As Teresa experienced a form of levitation while in prayer, she would have to gain the attention of her fellow um, sisters um, to hang on to her garments when she levitated. And St. Teresa also tried to hold on to the prayer mats on the floor to remain grounded and to cling to the furniture also when weightlessness set in. 
It was a challenge when St. Teresa would have local people witness some of the experiences. And this happened to her in deep prayer. Levitation was the last thing St. Teresa of Avila wanted. It drew the wrong kind of attention and embarrassment in public. And after some years, the levitations abruptly stopped. And it was very traumatic to her body. And it was very taxing on her ability to regain normal functioning in the convent and everyday functions. St. Teresa famously wrote in her spiritual autobiography, when asked of her view of God in a spiritual nature, St. Teresa stated, Prayer can be likened to that of sharing close ideas in the heart, mystical ideas, sharing them between friends. So again, her humility really shone through. She had such a deep, deep oneness, a, a deep belief. And it, it's, it's amazing to me. And uh, when people read um, another book that St. Teresa of Avila wrote, titled The Interior Castle, and it's by Dover Publications, copyright 1946, titled The Interior Castle. The work of this literature is filled with many treasured jewels about the power of prayer. The Interior Castle, St. Teresa displayed in words as she wrote, the importance of recognition of the Interior Castle is like the many chambers of the heart. It is like going through the Interior Castle. And I quote from St. Teresa, While I was beseeching our Lord today that he would speak through me, I began to think of the soul as it were, as it were of a castle made of a single or a very clear crystal in which there are many rooms, just as in heaven. Just as in heaven, there are many mansions End of quote. And of course, it refers to John 14, verse 2. Now, St. Teresa walks her readers all the way through to the seventh mansion, the state of the mystical marriage or divine union, where we and God become one with the infinite, which helps us to see the soul as infinite. In prayer and meditation, one can journey through the many rooms or mansions of the soul, ultimately discovering God at the center. Now, as you can imagine, the times during which St. Teresa of Avila brought forth these mystical teachings, which was, again, um, word of mouth, and the stories had probably gotten bigger and bigger. These were dangerous times for men and women to express ideas in consort with oneness of God and could bring serious confrontation with the church ruling at the time. Certain charges were directed against St. Teresa and all of her convent, all of the Carmelite com community. Many numerous times, formal investigations of her activities and those of the nuns of the barefoot Carmelite community she founded was definitely in an effort to, sci to silence, excuse me, to silence the spiritual community but this barefoot nuns, these Carmelite community, were always protected. Now, in this Pearl of Wisdom, we will hear shortly, that we will hear shortly, St. Teresa states, and I quote, Let God then fill all of your being. Let God fill your being with his voice as he answers prayers, as the father mother answers prayers and speaks to you in the innermost recesses of the heart and in the secret chamber of the heart, unquote. Now, I thought it good to bridge this complicated um, portion of St. Teresa of Avila to kind of bring forth all of that, that anchoring of the light that, that, that just must have occurred during the 16th century. And as we further study her incarnation, 
final, her final incarnation, St. Teresa was embodied as Florence Jeanette Miller. And we will br briefly cover some of the mystical, invaluable gifts that St. Teresa of Avila brought forth as Lady Christine. During this short time, working with Elizabeth Clare Prophet, helping them to expand the teachings of the Senate Masters, working in the publishing department of Summit University Press. Florence was born February 1936 in Krugemsdorp, South Africa. Florence grew up in South Africa and received her high school education through American correspondence courses because her parents were involved in government service. In June 1961, she received a bachelor's degree from the University of Wisconsin. After college, she worked in Canada for several years for the Canadian Education Association. Florence found the teachings in this, of the Ascended Masters in 1968 while living in New Mexico. And the minute she saw the photograph of Mark and Elizabeth Clare Prophet, recognized, she recognized them as true messengers of God. And how many times have we seen a photograph um, the the small little three by three by four, three by five um, chart of the presence, and we are instantly grabbed in because the light, that garment that we've worked on through the past, it it, it enfolds us because this this is what I experienced. Florence Miller, beloved Chila of El Moria and the Messengers dear co-worker and friend, fulfilled at inner levels the initiation of the Ascension on September 20th, 1979. She was given the title Lady Christine by St. Germain, July 5th at La Tyrell. Today in this dictation, we will hear a favorite song of the Senate Lady Master Christine, titled Introit to the Holy Christ Self, which we did the decree earlier. Lady Master Christine states on page two of this Pearl of Wisdom, and I quote, and therefore, beloved, know that the entering in and the going out is almost like an oscillation, the entering in and the going out of the soul as she puts on a certain fire of Christ, assimilating it, adjusting to it after a period of service, and again, receiving that fire of Christ and feeling that fire intensifying the deathless solar body, even the wedding garment. Through this song, number 29, Introit to the Holy Christ Self, I desire to draw you nearer to the goal so that your heart is fairly on fire before this message is through. End of quote. And in this quote, we can get a glimpse of the fire intensifying of the violet lane expressed so eloquently and humbly and simply. In this pearl, this, the Senate Master's Lady Christine refers throughout the teaching that of the seamless garment. And lovingly, we heard the parable of the wedding garment. The great divine director tells us in Pearl Wisdom, volume 34, number 57, titled, So Great a Love, about the seamless garment. The great divine director states, I quote, the seamless garment is a body of light beginning in the heart of the I am presence and descending around the crystal cord to envelop the individual in the vital currents of the ascension as he invokes the holy energies of the father for the return home to God, also known as the deathless silver body, end of quote. In this dictation, that we will hear shortly, St. Teresa gives explanations of the experiences leading up to the building and structuring of the seamless garment, which is reinforced throughout this pearl. The teaching of the wedding garment shows us how months and years of our experience of our lives go around the circumference of the cosmic clock, of course, where Jesus Christ is at the center. In reinforcing, utilizing the tube of light and expanding, bringing more light into our garments, and leaving off all the old outworn ideas as we strive to walk closely with our loving Father God, utilizing the woven garment also for protection as we nurture and care for the unfolding of the seamless garment. 
we are able to reunify and remend as we look back where we have dropped the stitch of frayed edges during times of, a, of our life when in ignorance we did not have attunement with the love of God's forgiveness. And now we can go back and mend and release old, outworn situations. And this is why our beloved El Moria asks you to specifically call to the angels who are called the weavers of God they come as weaving angels to reweave, and they are experts. They fill in those holes of the finer body so that you will never know that there was ever a tear there. They will assist you to fashion your wedding garment with skins of light substance from your presence in tandem with your soul and your Christ consciousness.